The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is here, and it looks a lot like the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra from last year, but how much is actually different, and is it worth upgrading? The short answer, of course, is no, but there is a lot more to it, and there may be some compelling reasons why you might consider upgrading. Let's put these head-to-head -head Super SAF style with some camera and moon samples, and really see what the differences are. So we're gonna start off with the design and the build, and look, guys, let's be honest, they look pretty much exactly the same. We've got that triple ring design, and we also had this with the S22 Ultra the year before. And I'm not gonna lie to you, while I've been testing these devices, there's been lots of times when I've picked up the S23 Ultra thinking it's the S24 Ultra and vice versa. The size and the weight is also very similar. The S24 Ultra is just slightly smaller in terms of the height, but it is just slightly wider and it weighs around two grams less. But there are some key differences. Firstly, we've got a titanium frame on the S24 Ultra compared to the armor aluminium frame on the S23 Ultra. This is supposed to be more durable. I'm not gonna actually test this out, but it's also got a matte finish, which I do prefer to the glossy finish of the S23 Ultra. Both devices have an IP68 water and dust resistant rating that hasn't changed. And they are both available in four default colors. The S23 Ultra launched with Phantom Black, cream, green, as well as a lavender, but they did have some exclusive colors available from samsung.com, a graphite, sky blue, lime, and a red. I'm not sure how easy it's gonna to be to be able to get hold of these colors now because I don't think you can get them from Samsung directly. The S24 Ultra is available in a titanium gray, black, violet, as well as a yellow. Now, there are three exclusive colors available directly from samsung.com, a titanium blue, orange, as well as green. Now, just to quickly mention, if you are considering buying the S24 Ultra from samsung.com, then you can use my affiliate link down in the description below. That's gonna give you double the storage as well as up to $150 of instant Samsung credit. Now for the build materials. So the S23 Ultra has Gorilla Glass Victus 2, both on the back as well as the front. The S24 Ultra has Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back, but at the front, it has Gorilla Armor. The S24 Ultra now also has a flat display, whereas the S23 Ultra has a curved display. So let's break this down. We've got curved versus flat. Now, in my opinion, curved looks better, but flat is more practical. It's also better with the S Pen. It doesn't kind of fall off the edge. And I think it's also more practical when it comes to applying things like screen protectors. And having Gorilla Armor, which is exclusive to the S24 Ultra right now, versus Gorilla Glass Victus 2 means that the display is gonna be a lot more scratch resistant. Samsung say up to four times. Now this is good news because the S23 Ultra, I've managed to get lots of scratches on it using it over the past year. Gorilla Armor is also supposed to reduce reflections by up to 75% and this is definitely noticeable. If you do put these in direct light, the S24 Ultra does not reflect light as much as the S23 Ultra does. Now, having said that, one thing that I have noticed in my testing is that the S24 Ultra display is not as vibrant as the S23 Ultra. This might be a little bit difficult to show on camera. Now it's not just my unit because I have confirmed with others as well. And it's something that you only really notice when you put these side by side. Now I'm assuming this is because of Gorilla Armor, that anti-reflective coating, which is making the S24 Ultra appear not as vibrant as the S23 Ultra. And realistically speaking, I don't think this is something people are gonna notice unless you actually put them side by side. Something that may or may not be significant to you, but something that I do have to mention. Now, apart from that, both of these have beautiful displays. We've got around 6.8 inches on both, although the S24 Ultra does have smaller bezels overall, especially noticeable towards the bottom chin area. We also have a slightly smaller punch out for the selfie camera. We've got dynamic AMOLED 2X technology with a Quad HD plus resolution and an adaptive refresh rate, one to 120 Hertz. But there is LTPO 3.0 technology on the S23 Ultra. The S24 Ultra now has LTPO 4.0, which is gonna be a bit more efficient and faster switching between those different refresh rates. And one of the things that I've also noticed is that when you have the always on display, you can have a wallpaper in the background of the S24 Ultra. I'm not sure if this is gonna to come to the S23 Ultra, but I'm assuming that might be thanks to the LTP 4.0 display. Although I don't like having a wallpaper on my always on display because it takes up more battery and it is quite distracting. I'd say one of the biggest updates that we've got on the S24 Ultra is 
the peak brightness, it is now up to 2,600 nits compared to the 1,750 nits of the S23 Ultra. And if you do use these outdoors in direct sunlight, you're definitely gonna appreciate that extra brightness on the S24 Ultra, especially with those reduced reflections of Gorilla Armor. One thing to keep in mind is that if you do put a screen protector on the S24 Ultra, if it's a standard screen protector, then you are going to lose those reduced reflections. It's gonna reflect as normal. Now we do have the same in-display fingerprint sensor on both devices. It is the Gen 2 Qualcomm 3D Sonic sensor. I've got no complaints about this because in my opinion, this is the best in-display fingerprint scanner on any smartphone. It's fast and it's accurate. And although it hasn't updated, I don't think there was really any need. Right, now for the camera. Hey, side side here. I'm not going to let him shoot me off this time. Guys, a lot of you that are watching are not subscribed. I've seen the statistics. So if you enjoy this video, you want to see more coverage like this, then please do subscribe. Also hit that thumbs up button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I'll let you get back to it. You heard the man. If you want to see more content like this, then do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. So for the camera hardware, most of the cameras have the same or similar camera hardware. So we've got a 12 megapixel selfie camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, the 200 megapixel primary camera and a 10 megapixel three times telephoto zoom camera. Now, after taking lots and lots of pictures and comparing them side by side, things are very, very similar. Now, of course, things may change with updates to software on the S24 Ultra, but right now in my testing, although the S24 Ultra might have slightly better dynamic range in some situations, from these cameras, most results are very, very similar. The big update that we have is with the zoom camera. So the S23 Ultra has a 10 megapixel, 10 times zoom camera. The S24 Ultra now has a 50 megapixel, five times zoom camera. So how do they compare? Well, when we're going up to three times, things are very, very similar. But when we do go to five times, this is when the optical zoom camera of the S24 Ultra kicks in and it really does make a difference. One of the reasons why Samsung went for a five times zoom camera instead of the 10 times was because between around five to nine times zoom, you wouldn't get the best results on the S23 Ultra, especially when you compared it to something like the Google Pixel 8 Pro or the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, the range between five up to 10 is covered quite nicely with the S24 Ultra. But what about when we get to 10 times zoom? Well, you'll be pleased to know that the S24 Ultra still performs really well and it's very difficult to tell the difference. Both actually do really well at 10 times. Now, the reason for this is although it's a five times optical zoom camera, we do have a high resolution, 50 megapixels. So the S24 Ultra can just also use the middle part of the sensor as well as that five times optical zoom to match the 10 times zoom of the S23 Ultra. Even if we go to 30 times, things are still very close. And even up to 100 times, it's very, very difficult to tell the difference between these two. And what about pictures of the moon? Well, you can see some pictures of the moon here. And once again, I think things are very, very close. Now, bearing in mind that Samsung does use AI to enhance pictures of the moon, but I think both are actually doing really well at 100 times. And this is another picture that was taken when it was evening time, just to kind of mix things up. Once again, I think things are very, very close. So that's in good light. What about zoom in low light? Well, the S24 Ultra can let in around 1.6 times more light when it comes to that extended zoom camera. So here with the primary camera, things are very similar. Now, when we go to three times, the S24 Ultra is actually doing better. Now, I'm assuming this might be thanks to the image signal processor that we have on the new chip. But when we get to five times, this is when you really notice the improvements on the S24 Ultra. You've got a much sharper image. What about when we go to 10 times? Well, at 10 times, again, things are much better on the S24 Ultra. Now, I'm assuming that because the 10 times periscope zoom camera on the S24 Ultra has such a narrow aperture, f4.9, it can't let in too much light. So Samsung may be cropping into the primary camera when shooting zoom images in extreme low light. But with the S24 Ultra, it can use that 50 megapixel zoom camera at 10 times pretty well. And even if we go to 30 times, you can see that the S24 Ultra is performing better.
So I would say some big updates for that zoom camera. And also you can take portraits at five times now on the S24 Ultra, which is a really interesting focal length and gives you some excellent portraits. This is something that you don't have on the S23 Ultra. One other thing that I noticed while using both of these devices is that there is noticeably less shutter lag on the S24 Ultra compared to the S23 Ultra. When I was taking images side by side, I managed to take way more in the same time on the S24 Ultra compared to the S23 Ultra. Now we also have some improvements for video. So with the S24 Ultra, you now have 4K at 120 frames a second, which is really nice. This is only available if you're in pro mode or if you're in the slow-mo mode. And speaking of slow-mo, Samsung has actually gotten rid of the super slow-mo feature on the S24 Ultra. This was 720p at up to 960 frames a second, but it was just a small burst and it was very difficult to capture and the quality was really bad. This is still available on the S23 Ultra, but it's something that I never use, so I'm really not gonna miss it. The S24 Ultra also comes with some new AI features, which we do have to talk about. So once you've taken an image, you can use some AI photo editing features it's gonna make some suggestions to remove reflections, remove people from the background. You can also select subjects, take them out, move them around, increase their size, decrease their size. My favorite feature is the ability to rotate an image without having to crop in, and it's gonna fill in the blanks around the size using AI, and this works really well. Now on the topic of AI features, let's talk about some of the other ones that we get with the software. So. Firstly, we do get Android 14 with One UI 6.1 out of the box on the S24 Ultra. The S23 Ultra, Samsung has been great with updates and we do have Android 14 with One UI 6.0 at the time of this video. Now, Samsung has promised seven generations of Android OS updates on the S24 Ultra, which is absolutely amazing. And it brings it in line with Google's Pixel devices. The S23 Ultra, Samsung had promised four generations of Android OS updates and five years of security updates. Now, one thing that you do have to consider is that the S23 Ultra is a year old. So we've already had one of those years. So at the time of this video, you're only gonna be getting three generations of Android updates versus the seven on the S24 Ultra, something to keep in mind. Now I've covered a lot of these AI features in previous videos, which you may have already seen, but for those who haven't, I'm gonna run through some of these. First one is Live Translate. If you make a phone call from the S24 Ultra to any other device, you can use Call Assist and you can translate that conversation. So if you're abroad, you wanna book a table in a restaurant, you don't speak the local language, it's gonna translate this for you and it does a pretty good job in my testing so far. There's the interpreter feature, which is going to be able to translate things back and forth if you are speaking to somebody that speaks a different language. 13 languages are supported at launch, but more are coming later. Chat Assist can adjust the tone of the conversation. It can make it sound more formal. It can make it sound more friendly. Browsing Assist can summarize a web page for you and highlight key areas. My favorite is Circle to Search. You can just tap and hold the home button or the navigation bar. Then you can circle anything on your screen and then it's gonna go ahead and find that for you. Works really well and I've tested it on a few different things. So a lot of very cool AI features. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Samsung has put in the small print that these features are gonna be free up until the end of 2025. So there may be a monthly charge after that. And at this time, we have no idea how much that might be. And to answer the question, are these features coming to the S23 Ultra? Well, the good news is, that at least some of these features will be coming to the S23 Ultra later in the year. I'm assuming these will be some of the cloud-based features which don't need the hardware, but the ones that are on device may or may not come to the S23 Ultra because we have different chipsets. So the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. This is an amazing chip and it's lasted me absolutely fine throughout the whole year. The S24 Ultra is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. It also has a 1.9 times larger vapor chamber, which is gonna give you enhanced heat dissipation. And it also has 
12 gigabytes of RAM across the board. The S23 Ultra starts with eight gigabytes of RAM for the 256 gigabyte version, and the 512 and one terabyte versions have 12 gigabytes of RAM. I think the area that you're actually gonna notice a difference is when it comes to gaming, because you've got better ray tracing, and you're gonna be able to achieve higher frame rates in particular games. I am not a gamer. My friend Thunder Yi from Board at Work is, and he's actually done a detailed gaming test of the S24 Ultra. I'll leave that linked in the description below if you wanna check it out. Now we've got the S Pen on both devices, and the hardware hasn't really changed. The size hasn't really changed either. That's not a bad thing because the S Pen works great on the S23 Ultra and it also works great on the S24 Ultra. It might not be something that you use all the time, but if you need to sign some documents or edit some images, it's priceless. For the speakers, we've got serious speakers on both devices, but we do have improved speakers on the S24 Ultra. You'll notice that we've got a slit instead of the dots at the bottom. And the S24 Ultra does have louder speakers and I am no audiophile. My friend Thunder E once again has done a detailed speaker test on the S24 Ultra versus the S23 Ultra. If you wanna see exactly how much louder the S24 Ultra is and how much better it sounds, then you can check out his video. I'll leave that link down in the description below. Right, for the battery. So we have the same size battery on both devices, 5,000 milliamps. Battery life on the S23 Ultra has been very good over the past year that I've been using it. The S24 Ultra is just a little bit better thanks to the new chipset. Now, I don't think you're gonna notice a big difference in your day to day because I haven't. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of people who are gonna be doing detailed battery drain tests and I think they'll find that the S24 Ultra is just slightly better, maybe around 5%. But generally speaking, both of these have excellent battery life. Charging hasn't changed either, so you've got up to 45 watts of wide charging. That charger is not included out of the box. 15 watts of wireless charging, and both also support wireless power share, so you can charge your earbuds or other devices at the back of the S23 as well as the S24 Ultra. Right, now for pricing. This is where things get interesting. And this is where I think there may be a compelling reason for you to upgrade if you have the S23 Ultra. So the S24 Ultra in the UK starts at the same price as the S23 Ultra did last year. In the US, however, there has been a price increase. So you're gonna pay more for the S24 Ultra than what you would have done at the launch of the S23 Ultra. Having said that, Samsung does have some crazy pre-order deals on right now. So if you use my exclusive affiliate link down in the description below, you will get double the storage. So you can get the 512 gigabyte version for the price of the 256 or the one terabyte version for the price of the 512. For a limited time, you can also get up to $150 of instant Samsung credit. And if you're a student, you can also get 10% off the price of the S24 Ultra. And if you have the S23 Ultra and you trade it in, Samsung will actually give you up to $750. Now, when you consider all of that, if you are trading in your S23 Ultra, you can get the S24 Ultra as little as the equivalent of around $270, or if you're not a student, then up to around $400. Now, if you are an S23 Ultra owner, and say I came up to you and I said to you, Give me your S23 Ultra with around three to $400, and I'm gonna give you a brand new S24 Ultra with double the storage. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So from what I said at the start of this video, should you upgrade? Well, if you've got the S23 Ultra, I think it's still gonna last you for a good few years. You don't have to upgrade. However, if you do consider some of these limited time pre-order deals, it might be worth just getting the newer device, which is gonna give you improvements with the zoom camera, the chip, and I think most importantly, those seven generations of OS updates. If you've got an older Ultra model, maybe the S22, S21 Ultra or older, then I do think that the S24 Ultra is a good upgrade and it might be worth considering. But I definitely wanna emphasize, like I always do, if you're happy with your current device, then there is no need to upgrade. You can use it for as long as you want to. That's what I think of you. What do you guys think? Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If you want to see my detailed Super SAS style camera comparison of the S24 Ultra versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can see that video here. Maybe you're not interested in the Ultra device. Maybe you want to check out the S24, the S24 Plus. Well, I've also covered those devices here. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. And once again, if you haven't already, then do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. It will make SideSaf stay. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.